Oh, this is terrible. This is terrible. Oh, that's horrible. You can't even. S That's sort of. I guess it's just the charger. You can't even see what the char what it's charging. Alrighty, so what we have today is something special. Today we are going to do a versus between the Ryobi One Plus heat gun and the Milwaukee M. Uh, battery operated heat gun. So, all right, so before we even start this video, what I I wanted to give a huge shout out to uh, my Home Depot friends over in the McHenry, Illinois area, Michael and Bob. Thank you guys so much for helping make uh, helping make this video even possible to do. So they helped me out in a big way and I I owe them a lot now. Uh, thank you, Michael and Bob, for assisting me with this video. First impressions that I get when it comes to comparing these two, there's not much of, of a difference in size. These two are almost exactly the same when it comes to the size. Height, length, and, uh, and thickness. This one is a little bit fatter than the Milwaukee one, and that's only because of the design on the top. It's fat here, then it goes into a uh, narrow, narrower line. This one just goes straight. All right, so when it comes to the size, they, they both are pretty much the same. Uh, both of these do have an LED light, which on the Milwaukee, it is located under the trigger right there, which let's activate that. To activate that you even have okay which is right there on the Ryobi the LED light is on the foot of the tool they, it, they're very familiar I mean even the front even inside is the exact same is it's the exact same at the nozzle and so because of that it's I, I'm gonna assume that these are gonna perform the same Pretty much almost the exact same. But uh, my my design preference is the Ryobi. Uh, because I I like that the I like that the handle is the same thickness and a good design all the way around. This fits nat uh, more natural in my hand than the Milwaukee does. Now this is my first time actually uh, really holding a new Milwaukee tool. Uh, in my adult life, and I, I, I'm not really impressed with it. I, I'm really not. I don't like that the bottom part of the handle is skinny. I, I feel like I, I, I need to grip on it more because it's because of that uh, extra thinness of the bottom of the handle. Now this one, this uh, this naturally this, this design naturally fits in my hand. It naturally does. It's really comfortable holding this. It's just it it it's good like that. And most of of Ryobi's tools are that design. Actually, pretty much all of them with this handle. I mean, the, this drill, whole like it it feels really good in my hand. It, it, now that is that's just a preference. And now because of that. That just doesn't feel natural. It doesn't. Now, when it comes to when it comes to the unlocking uh, mechanism to be able to use the tool, I immediately had issues with the Milwaukee's unlock because, as you can see on the uh, Ryobi, you just push it in. Now, this is this is how my hand natu naturally sits, just like that. 
and then which that leaves that leaves that much room uh, between the finger and the unlock button. So I naturally do that, and good to go. Now with the the Milwaukee, this one you actually push down. You need to push that down, and the way this naturally sits in my hand, uh, I have the one side here and one side sitting there, just because of the skinniness of the handle. This is how I nat naturally hold this. But to turn this on, I have to hold it a certain way, then ex extremely extend, then push down, then you're good to go. So yeah, just to turn it on, I have to awkwardly hold this. See, one more time with the Ryobi. Natural, not even gripping hard. Good to go. And as you can see, my uh, finger isn't even close to the unlock mechanism. So there is a big difference when it comes to handling the tool because of the natural design of the Ryobi compared to the, the Milwaukee. Now, if you're a Milwaukee fan... You know, you're used to this design, so like this would be awkward to you. But I'm a Ryobi fan, so this one is awkward to me. This is not, it's not a bad design at all. It's just a design that I'm not used to. A Milwaukee fan, a Milwaukee user would have no problem with this handle because that's, that's the design that, it, that they're used to. Same thing with DeWalt. If you use a DeWalt one, that handle is going to be different than the Milwaukee and the Ryobi. So the DeWalt users would say that this is crap. No, it all depends on the tool that you use. But I do not like that that you push that down. This should be a push in because that's that's what you naturally do. You push it in. And both of these go up to 875 degrees. And they both have the same rate when it comes to uh, how fast it gets to operational uh, operational heat, which both of them say six to seven seconds and they both of them say that they are they get up to heat 30 percent faster than a corded heat gun but because of the batteries these are limited limited to what they can do so if these two are competed against uh a corded heat gun these two would lose even if these two were together in one these two would lose compared to any other brand of a corded heat gun just because of the batteries. All right, so one thing I did also did want to mention is that this uh, the Milwaukee does have a hook. That that is a nice feature to have that the Ryobi does not. Uh, if you just in case if you do need a hook at that in your situation, like if you're on a ladder, you have one. That, that's actually smart to put on there. Ryobi should have done the same. So. Uh, what I want to do first when it comes to this test is I want to see, I'm going to put these through the ropes and see which one dies first. Now, that one is full and that one is full. So what I'm going to, what I'm going to do, we're going to get a couple of zip ties and see which one dies first. We're going to turn these on one at a time and we're going to let them run until they die. And I'm going to turn the lights off so you can see the glow die. It's only going to be a few seconds. I'll turn the Milwaukee on first. It's only going to I'll turn the Ryobi on first. It's only going to be a few seconds ahead. All right, so I just watched the footage, and they both ended at nine minutes with with 
with a 3 amp hour battery. The reality is, these two are the same. They're, they're the same. Uh, we're going to see if one of these could set paper on fire. So we're going to do that test really quick just, just to see if they can. So, and then it, we're also going to see if uh, these can melt a little bit of plastic. Uh, so let's do that test and see if they're capable of doing it. Now, this is not a comparison between the two. This is a comparison uh, compared to a corded heat gun. Remember, these two are the same. All right, this one glowed, as you saw uh, in the footage, this one glowed in the dark a little bit brighter than this one did. But we are going to see if it could do it. All right, so, so first we're going to do it with the Milwaukee. Let's see if the Milwaukee heat gun could set this paper on fire. All right, we're gonna call that. That was approximately about two minutes of using it. It got both sides to like that. This will not set a paper on fire. At least within a reasonable amount of time. And if, one thing I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna press up against it and accidentally have a flame go in there. Next up is the Ryobi heat gun. Let's see if this could set uh, the paper on fire. All right, no, they cannot. I, I'm not gonna, there's no point. If I used it less on the Ryobi, uh, this is the Ryobi one, that's the Milwaukee. If I did a little bit more and it did it the same thing, it will not set paper on fire. At least you would have to have the metal directly on it, which I don't wanna do. Well, let's do the plastic test. We're only gonna do this for about a minute, then call it quits for this one. All right, good job to Milwaukee. That completely melted that tab. This can melt plastic. That is a good thing. Very good. Good job, Milwaukee. All right, it is time for the Ryobi's turn. Time for the Ryobi's turn. It's a little bit thicker plastic, but I think it'll, it'll be able to do it. So as you can see, it did melt the plastic, completely melted that. Both of them, uh, that's Milwaukee's, that is Ryobi's. Both of them melted the plastic very nicely. So both of them are capable of doing so. The main difference of these is the battery systems and this one has a hook. So when it comes to you deciding which one you should get, that depends on your battery system. If you have both, both of them will do you justice. Uh, they both work and operate the same. Uh, they both have the same, as we talked about, the same design in the nozzle. Uh, so it's it's a preference. It's which, whichever one you want. They, they both are good. They both are the same. And like I said before, a corded heat gun will blow these out of the water no matter what brand. Uh, but Temperature wise, they both are the same. I could hold, I just I just got done with the test a few minutes ago. I could hold these two by the body and not feel heat enough to where I need to drop this soon. Like this is just warm and this, this one's actually a little bit cooler than this one is. And also uh, that being said, I wanted to point out the fan. The fan, I'm not sure if, if it's just louder, but the fan seems a little bit more powerful in the Ryobi. As you can tell in here, then you can hear this one. Let's do a uh, touch test to uh, where I can't stand it anymore. Yeah, it seems like the Ryobi, Ryobi's fan 
the Ryobi, the, the fan is just different. This one is more direct. I could feel it like it's in a funnel. Like it's like it's in the palm of my hand. It's a more direct, uh, di more direct fan. This one I could feel in a bigger radius. Yeah, this one I, I feel all in there. But yes, this one is a more powerful fan than the Milwaukee is, which is surprising actually. So they're both good. They both are good. They both work exactly the way that they're, they're supposed to. So yeah, but it is cool to have these two, both of them in my hand. It is very cool. Uh, it's cool to test these out. Uh, once again, thank you to uh, Michael and Bob at Home Depot for uh, uh, assisting me with, uh, with this video. It is awesome of them to do what they did. So, so yeah, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. And there you have it. Uh, the two heat guns are, they're both good. They're, they're both worth every penny for what they're capable of doing because of the battery system in each of them. So then the decision's up to you which one you think you need to get. But I recommend both. Uh, I recommend both based on which system you're already invested in. That's pretty much it. Uh, this is Dave Nicholas. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.